Hello, uh, this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of Engineering. Uh, in this session, I will be uh, talking and introducing you to the concept of uh, power system security. Um, you have done a lot of uh, applications in the system like load flow, economic dispatch, and we saw hydrothermal uh, uh, scheduling. So in all these, the system is running satisfactorily. Satisfactorily means uh, whatever generation I have is sufficient to meet the demand. Now, in the system, we provide some reserves. I think you're all familiar with what is called as a spinning reserve. So in a spinning reserve, some extra generators or generation capacity is synchronized and synchronized to the grid and is capable of taking up load immediately. So this spinning reserve is uh, necessary if we have to consider some emergency, like some need when there's a fault or uh, when the load suddenly increases and so on. So while we are operating the system, we have to keep in mind, reserve is one part. I have to keep in mind that faults will always occur in the grid. The faults might be due to natural causes like lightning or uh, you know some bird hit, or it could be also due to some flaw, like a generator may go out because of some um, uh, problem with the generator and the transmission line, there might be an outage, the breakers may trip uh, because uh, possibly there was a lightning strike and so on. So I cannot keep resorting to load shedding or uh, you know a blackout condition whenever there is a fault. So the meaning of contingency is a fault, a disturbance, right? So here we are not talking of minor disturbances which are always present because of the uh, dynamic nature of the loads. I'm talking of some major disturbance. Now, every such disturbance cannot throw me out of gear from an operational point of view. So I must have some control mechanisms with me so that in the event of a disturbance, I must be able to take a control action so that I still am able to run the system satisfactorily. Okay, so the most satisfactory condition is when I can meet my entire demand, right? However, under certain conditions, I may need to do some load shedding. That means some demand may have to be cut off, but still I can save the system. What do I mean by save the system? I mean that I prevent it from going into a blackout. That is very, very important. So just understand that in the modern uh, days, the grids are really large. They're really large. Okay. So if there is a blackout, the entire grid is shut down, then it can lead to huge economic losses. A downtime can lead to huge economic losses. Okay. Even way back in uh, 2003, one of the biggest blackouts in the history of uh, US and uh, Canada, in those days, it led to a $6 billion loss for three days because it is not just the blackout. What about the restoration time? You have to again bring back the entire system into synchronization and then bring them into operation and slowly load the system, which is going to take anything between 48 to 72 hours. So with modern grids, we cannot, I repeat and stress, we cannot afford to have blackouts. The economic loss would be really, really huge. Okay, so the security of the system has to be ensured. What do we mean by security in our lives? I must have a standby. I must have a plan of action. Okay, so the whole crux of the study of power system security is how do I keep my system running in the event of a contingency? Now I cannot sit and plan what to do when the contingency occurs. I can't take a decision. So I must have a plan of action. See, we all take a medical insurance, right? You don't go for any insurance after you have a health problem. I have an insurance anticipating a health issue. It may arise or it may not arise. Are you clear? So 
security is actually like an insurance i have to be prepared i have to be prepared in the event of something occurring so the entire thing we will discuss in the next two three sessions will hover around this okay now how much of insurance should you take that will depend on how healthy you are so a very healthy person may not go in for too much of insurance but a person who is already prone to some uh, health issues may go in for a higher insurance it will depend on your age etc same way so what are the contingencies i have to pre be prepared for so that will depend on what is the age of my plant what is the age of my uh, uh, equipment and uh, uh, how uh, quickly can i uh, you know uh, get back the system into operation and so on and so forth so let's just see some uh, aspects of this so power system security relates to the ability of the system to meet demand under dynamic disturbances in the system so the major i would say contingency which can occur is loss of a generator so today the generators have gone to huge sizes or uh, typically a couple of decades back you know it was very common to see generators of 25 megawatts or 50 megawatts and so on in smaller plants today you no longer have them in operation you have generators of 500 megawatts huge ones so a loss of a generator can lead to a heavy loss in the generation so can my system withstand this a generator outage an outage is loss meaning of outage a line outage so we have tie lines we have lines transferring power from one country to other country in many european countries you have power being transferred from one grid to other grid so on so what if there is a line outage where there is a bulk power transfer can my system withstand it what about two generator outages okay what about heavy overloading can my system withstand it so these are all the questions we have to answer when we talk of security now there is a regulatory uh, standard which says that every system must be n minus 1 reliable the n minus 1 reliability criteria has to be met what does this mean so if i have n components so here primarily i am not talking of chutku chutku components like relays and circuit breakers i am talking of the major components like major transmission lines and generators even so let us say i have n components even if one of them there is an outage my system must be able to run smoothly without any loss of load so here when i talk smoothly i mean loss of load should not occur that means my demand must be met so that is the best possible solution for you okay so n minus 1 criteria specifies that the system has to be stable under the loss of the largest generator or the largest transmission line now is that sufficient is that a sufficient condition so i build my system plan design and operate so that n minus 1 criteria is met what happens if two components fail so do we need an n minus x criteria so people are beginning to feel that n minus 1 criteria is no longer sufficient because of the downtime costs today involved with the massive grids we have in the modern power systems so do we need an n minus x how much should x be n minus 2 n minus 3 n minus 4 please remember all these costs money okay you want an insurance for 3 lakhs you will be paying some premium x you want an insurance for 10 lakhs you will be paying something much more than x you want an insurance for 20 lakhs you will be paying something more you get it so higher the reliability more the insurance more will be the cost so i can't just go on making my system very robust it will cost me huge amount of money and it may not not at all be viable so somewhere we have to strike a balance okay so security will consider all these issues so you have three major functions in the security the first one is system monitoring obviously 
I have to monitor the parameters and know when I am threatened. You know, it is like you have an insurance, fine, but you should know when your health is disturbed. So you periodically go and do some medical tests. That is the equivalent of monitoring. So I keep monitoring the system parameters so that I know when my system is in danger. You monitor the voltages, you monitor the frequency. Okay, you monitor the power flows in the lines. So you will know when a line is overloaded. You can alert the operator. Look, that line is getting overloaded. Take some action. Okay, you monitor the frequency. Hey, the frequency is coming down. This means that it's an indication that my system is getting overloaded, stressed. Do something about it. Yeah, so the first thing is system monitoring. The second thing is contingency analysis. So in my present state, okay, how secure am I? What are all the faults that can occur? And how can I ride through those faults? Is my system robust enough to withstand those faults? Okay, that is the analysis part. And the third is corrective measure. If the fault occurs, what do I do? I keep the action plan ready, plan A, plan B, plan C. So if plan A, I cannot execute, go to plan B, that I cannot execute. So we must have all those in place, the corrective measures. So what is the aim of all this? The aim of all this is that first aim is the system should be stable. Okay. So the best thing is stable and all your load met. Right. Supposing this is not possible. The first best situation is not possible. The second best. You operate the system, still operate the system with some load loss. Okay, some load loss, right? And even if that is not possible, three, go for a major load shedding or go for what is called as islanding. That means split your system into small islands, each of them operating independently. So you may have some heavy load loss because of this. Finally, a very bad situation where you may end up in a blackout. Okay. So the system monitoring supplies the power system operators with all the data information on the conditions of the system. So you have telemetry systems in, in place and uh, transmission of data. Today you have different communication channels through which data can be transmitted. So uh, the telemetry systems are all, they all come under SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition okay so we monitor the voltages the currents the flows the status of the breakers and switches in every substation etc they're all monitored and critical and important information such as frequency generator outputs transformer tap positions they're all telemetered and they are all transmitted and available at the central control center Okay, so the modern control centers have fantastic HMI, human machine interfaces, wherein the operator is able to look at all the displays and can know through visual impacts, like there's a change in the color of the line or so on, to indicate an overloading, overloading to indicate the tripping of a circuit breaker, okay, or to indicate frequency uh, dropping, etc. So huge monitors are available for this place. And this itself is a major uh, uh, you know, study uh, where vendors, they compete with each other to present very aesthetic displays for the operator's ease in detecting whenever there is any abnormality in the system. And you can build suitable warnings and alarms if required, okay? So when it comes to security, Different levels of security are defined. So they are called as the state classifications. Okay, so let us just see what it is. So these are all a function of the energy management system that is your control center. So the different levels of security are first one, level one, secure, very, very healthy. All parameters are well within limits. Okay, so I'm no way very clo operating close to the limits, which means that I have huge margins. The entire load is suppl supplied. No limits are violated. What limits am I talking of? Generation limits, 
voltage limits, frequency limits. They're all you know, grid code. You have a grid code, how you operate the system. Okay, so all these, everything is perfect. And not only perfect now, any contingency which take place, like N minus one, any major line, generator outage or transmission line outage, even if I have this, I can still run the system beautifully, stably, confidently, reliably, without any need for post-contingency action. Okay? Without any need for post-contingency action. An emergency occurs, a fault occurs, a generator outage, no problem. My system will still run. I don't have to take any control action. So this is the most secure level, level one. Okay? So what happens here? Any contingency can be met and you can ride through the contingency without taking any action. Okay? Next, level two. It is called as correctively secure. I have a small problem, right? If I take a tablet, that problem will be solved. Health issue will be solved like that. So all the load is supplied. There is no problem. It's not life threatening to the system grid, right? And if a contingency occurs, if I take some appropriate action, then I can still supply all the load without violating any limits. Okay, so a post-contingency action should be taken. A post-contingency action should be taken. This could be a simple network reconfiguring or shifting the load from one bus to other bus or closing an isolator for, you know, transferring the load and so on. Some control action has to be taken, right? I am still secure, correctively secure. No problem. Okay, why? I'm still supplying all my load and still well within the limits. No limit has been violated. And normal condition, no problem. Only if a contingency occurs, I have to take an action and still I would be all right. right? So you can see that both level one and level two are secure. They are good operating states, except that in level one, I have a lot of robustness. And in level two also I am robust, but I need to take some control action. Obviously you can see that level one is going to be expensive because I have to have some extra reserves and I have to have some redundancy built into the system so that I can tap the redundancy in case of a contingency. Whereas level two, I'm still secure and it is still a very, very acceptable point and it will cost less. So it would be cheaper to operate the system at level two than level one. Always remember, there is no free lunch in the world. Everything costs money. Now, in level three uh, is alert, where the system becomes alert. Here the load is still supplied without violating any limits. But normally, but if a contingency were to occur, it, I will need to have a loss of load. So that's the difference between alert state and correctively secure. In correctively secure, what happens? As it stands, the system is fine. If a contingency occurs and I take a corrective action, I can still continue. Okay. In the alert one, right now the system is fine. I am able to meet the load without violating limits. But if a contingency occurs, I cannot do anything. I have to shed some load. I'll give you a very simple example. You say you have a 500 megawatt generator. Okay, simple example, 500 megawatt generator. I, am, I have loaded it only at 100 megawatt. You're very secure because you still have a 400 megawatt margin to load the generator. So you will be in level one. You will be in level one. Okay. So now let's say I'm operating at 400 megawatts or, okay. So if I'm operating at 400 megawatts and there is a, there is a contingency, right? So now I'm slightly less secure because I can only have another 100 megawatts of loading the system. Okay. Right. So I'm, I can still say I'm correctively secure, but supposing I'm running at 500 megawatts, fine, no problem. 
as long i am alert now i am running at my peak at my maximum now if a contingency occurs i have to shed some load i cannot supply all the load are you clear what what is the meaning of alert yes so in the alert state the load is still being supplied but it cannot ride through contingencies without loss of load so when you shed some load then you can bring back the system to level 1 or level 2 to a completely secure or a correctively secure state so level 3 is alert level 4 here all the load is supplied but some operating limits are violated okay so maybe some generator is slightly overloaded some lines are overloaded to supply the demand to keep it but still the system is operating and if there is any contingency then i cannot correct the violations and meet the contingency without a loss of load so with the loss of load i can bring it back to level 3 that means what without violating the limits so this cannot be done so correctable emergency now it's slightly worse than the alert mode it is slightly worse than the alert mode in the alert mode i have not violated any constraints and in the correctable emergency mode i have already violated some constraints some limits but the load is being supplied right so it is slightly worse than the alert mode it's called as correctable emergency then i have non correctable emergency where the load is supplied with violation of operating limits the limits are all violated and i have to go for a loss of load how much of load to shed will depend on uh, what is the situation what is the contingency and we can know that from an optimal power flow program it's called as non control correctable emergency so i cannot shift to alert mode from here i have to shed some load i have to shed some load then finally we come to restorative mode where i have already shed the load so the limit see it is like this the system is secure let, let me just take you through the same stages the system is secure okay so now let us say the loading has increased the loading has increased so uh, it has come to uh, you know correctable security so now if if a contingency occurs you know some some correction has to be done uh, to keep it stable and run okay so now what happens some more load is there now i am in the alert state i have not violated my limits i am running the system but i am very close to the limits very close to the limits right and now if any contingency occurs i have to do some load shedding then i can come to a correctable emergency correctable emergency where where you know i am i am in alert alert mode and from the alert mode because of some disturbance i have moved to a state where some limits are violated where some limits are violated possibly possibly what has happened some line is overloaded okay or some generator is overloaded i have hit the tap limit of a transformer clear are you understanding so now if i just do some control like i shed some load i can go back to the alert mode and still be secure okay now non correctable emergency is i cannot meet it the limits are violated drastically so i have to shed the load so once i shed the load what is my situation the violated limits come back come back to acceptable values but a, a part of the load in the system is removed it is shed so that is the restorative mode okay now i have to take some control some some lines have tripped okay so now i have to clear the fault and close back the line re energize energize the lines some generator may have tripped because either the under frequency or over frequency relay has operated now i have to bring back my generation into synchronization so that is the control measure i have to take okay and then try to bring it back to level 1 2 or even to the alert state you can bring back so we have discussed six levels of security six levels of security so you just see here this is all compactly shown in a table so level 1 secure 
all loads supplied, no operating limits violated, and in the event of a contingency also, there will be no violations. Okay? Now, you can go to level 2, which is correctively secure. All load is supplied. Again, there are no violations. Now, if there is any violation caused when a contingency occurs, you can correct it by some control actions without loss of load. The control action could be you change the tap setting or you close a bus bar and so on. So that is correctively uh, secure. So now with the control action, you may come back to le level one or you can still operate the system at level two. No problem. Now level three, alert. All load is supplied. Okay, no operating limits are violated. But if a contingency occurs, some violations caused by a contingency, you cannot correct it without loss of load. That's the difference between level two and level three. In level two, I can correct it without loss of load. In level three, I cannot correct it without loss of load. Now, if I take some suitable control action, possibly I can move into level two or level one. Okay. So next, level four, controllable emergency. All load is supplied, but some operating limits are violated. I cannot correct this even in the normal condition, that is even without a contingency, unless I shed the load. I shed the load. So with that, you can move into any one of the upper levels. Now level five, non-controllable emergency. Operating limits are severely violated and you need to shed the load. And in level five, the load is already shed. The load is already shed. And the limits have come back within operating values. But I have lost load. So I have to restore the system. I have to restore the system by suitable control actions. Okay.